Hey everyone, hello from my kitchen table here in Minnesota. We are working from this new reality of being homebound during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Um, and truthfully, like all of you, Josie and I have been rethinking how we can uh, reach people in a, uh, in a way that is safe and effective. Um, we have been very fortunate to be speaking to writers groups throughout the beginning of the spring um, about the topic of Amazon and how to use Amazon ads effectively. And now with this new reality, um, knowing that our upcoming presentations are not gonna be able to be held in person, we figured we would get together with you virtually in this way um, and hopefully teach you something while you are homebound, hopefully still um, creating and learning and growing as an author. And a lot of the authors who have seen this presentation from us live um, have said that they thought that this was one of the most helpful marketing presentations that they've, they've seen. So we, we don't want to have this be limited by um, us not being able to give this to authors in person. So we're, we're glad to be able to share this with you guys in this way. We also think that there might be a lot more people on Amazon now. Um, looking for books than there has been previously. Usually this time of year, the spring is one of the, the slowest times for book sales, but I think with a lot of people being forced to be in their houses now and you know needing entertainment, things to inspire, to enlighten, to escape, I think a lot of people are gonna be turning to, to books right now, you know, to movies, TV, all that stuff, but I think that we're gonna see a surge in book sales. And I think, it's really important um, as an, I think authors have an important job right now, actually, with helping they do. people through this, you know? They do. And really a lot of the things that we're going to talk about in this presentation um, are just um, being magnified now with this crisis because mm -hmm. we're really talking about Amazon being this gigantic um, Google for authors. So, yeah. 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 Well, let's get into how we even got into talking to authors about Amazon in the first place, Roseanne, because a lot yeah, of you out there probably yes. don't know us. You're seeing us for the first time. <laughs> um, a, lot of a lot of authors in Minneapolis know us, but we're probably talking to people from all over the world right now, we realize. So let's, right. let's introduce ourselves. <laughs> right. So my name is Roseanne Chang. I have written four books. Uh, um, and I have to say that um, for a long time, I was really anti-Amazon. Um, and I say that with love in my heart, but the truth was I felt like as an author, Amazon was um, taking too much of a cut of my sales. Um, I felt really intimidated by using Amazon because I'm not a big tech person. Um, it felt like um, go, you know, learning um, algorithms or how to use Amazon um, from an ads perspective felt like just something I was not going to be able to manage. And so, and then I met Josie, um, who basically said, no, Roseanne, it's really important that you learn to use an, um, Amazon and not just to market your books, but to help other authors market books, because I have acted as a book marketing director for the past three and a half years. So long story short, um, Josie basically said, um, listen, take my online course. Uh, if you hate it, then um, we never have to talk again and have a wonderful life. Um, but if you love it, then um, I hope you'll use the strategies and tell other authors about how valuable these strategies can be. Well, what happened was I ended up taking the online course and I learned two really important things. The first was um, that I could do Amazon ads, even me, who really, as my husband would attest, I am quite technologically challenged, but Josie had a way of breaking it down for me or was really manageable. I understood what she was saying, um, and I understood how to create an ad strategy that felt um, both right to me and within my budget. But more importantly, what I learned through the Amazon ads was that, um, you know, I felt after four books, like uh, I was starting to burn out. Um, marketing your book is hard work. And I really had come to a point where I was like, I don't know if I have this in me anymore. Um, all the school visits and the, um, like the traditional marketing 
um, that I was doing. It was, it was a hustle and mm-hmm. it just felt like a lot. And when Josie taught me how to market my book to people who already wanted my book, who were already searching for my book, um, it made selling my book easy. Um, it made me feel like I was being more impactful as an author. And for all of those reasons, it made me feel like I could create again. And so learning how to do this myself was really, really powerful. And thankfully, working with Josie means that I am working with somebody who is really into the weeds with the tech stuff. She kind of geeks out on what Amazon is doing and what all the trends are with that. And thank God for that, because when you when you understand how the ads work, then you kind of know that you have Josie to turn to, Mm -hmm. um, who's kind of going to be on the, um, you know, just, um, always looking for the next best thing when it comes to, um, using Amazon to its full potential. Um, the first thing is that Amazon is officially a pay to play system. So, Those of you who go on Amazon, shop on Amazon, have probably noticed that there's a lot more ads on Amazon than there used to be. So for example, um, a lot of you probably know about the also bought section of Amazon. When you go on, there's an also bought section of books that have been bought with whatever book you're looking at. And uh, and the end of about 2018 is when Amazon started replacing some of the also bought sections with sponsored products instead. You know, Amazon, I know, has realized what a cash cow the advertising is for them. So I think they've really ramped up their, their ad game. So you're going to start seeing a lot of books still have the also bought section, but almost every book now has a sponsored product section too. And some books just have sponsored product section and no also bought. So it's just, it's a lot Mm -hmm. of ads. Um, So I, and I know that a lot of authors, they, they kind of assume that if their book is up on Amazon, then it could somehow wind up in this sponsored product section just because everybody just they loved uploaded it, it. Right. or because it's there. Yeah. So right. what do you have to say about that? No, here's the deal. There's no way for you to get into the sponsored product section unless you're running ads. That's the reality. Like your book is not going to get into this section, the sponsored product section, unless you're running ad campaigns. It can get mm-hmm. into the also bought section if somebody bought your book along with another book. But like I said, that also bought section is starting to disappear in some places. So really to get your book seen, especially the next place I want to talk about is search. So if you go into Amazon and actually search, like you're searching Google say, so my book's about gratitude. So if I go in and I search for gratitude, these first couple things that pop up where it says sponsored, sponsored, those are targeted ads. Those are ads. So your book is not going to come up at the top of search unless you are running ads yourself. And that the Amazon ad system is separate from the, where you upload your book onto Kindle. Like you have to create your own ad campaigns and run them. I feel like authors kind of get confused about that. They think if they upload a book Mm -hmm. onto Amazon, it's automatically going to have ads running and that's not the case. Definitely not. And I like this visual because it really shows um, what I was talking about before about using Amazon as this Google for authors, as you said, because um, I think a lot of times authors um, feel like people are going to be searching specifically for their title um, when they're looking for their book. But really you want to be searching under, you want to be visible when people search for your subject or your genre. Is that correct? You absolutely do. Because the reality is, is the audience of people who are going to be searching for your exact title is going to be probably pretty small, especially if you're an unknown first time author. So you want to like piggyback onto the, the search terms that are, are broader, you know, so that your book can stand out. And even let's say you, you do have people searching for your exact title. If you're not running ads on your book, your book's still not going to be number one at the top of that search. Even with people putting in your exact title, it's going to be these sponsored ads that are going to be at the top of the search. Mm. So, so that's what you mean by pay to play. If, you, totally. if your book is on Amazon, it's not enough. You need to right. pay 
into having it be visible. And so that leads us into number two here, which is that keywords on Amazon are the key to a successful sales strategy on Amazon too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's, that's like the number one lesson in my course about, it's all about targeting the right readers with your book. And you mm -hmm. can't do that unless you're running advertising. Yep. You know? and, and when you say keywords, you're talking about the things that people are putting into any sort of search bar. So right. if it's in Google or even if it's in Amazon, and again, we, we keep saying this, but like Amazon really is just, just this giant search engine, right? So you're right. talking about the words that you put in that toolbar to lead people to your book. Right. So for example, like I said, my book's about gratitude. So if somebody, it's called the gratitude jar. So if somebody goes into Amazon and types in gratitude jar, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that my book's going to show up that, that one of my keywords needs to be gratitude jar so that my book will, will pop up. Let me explain how this works a little bit better. So when you run ads in Amazon, there's two types of ads you can run. It's going to ask you if you want to do a manual campaign or an automatic campaign. And so with a manual campaign, that's when you create a list of keywords that you can have, um, the, you know, the ads target your book to. So for example, like I said, if I have gratitude jar as one of my keywords, when somebody types in the word gratitude jar and I'm running a manual ad campaign, my book ads are going to pop up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It yeah. totally does. Mm -hmm. And so the automatic ones, what does that mean? So the automatic ones are when you let the algorithm mm -hmm. choose where your ads are going to go. And it's, it's mm -hmm. way more, it's only based on what your categories are in. So let me just show you what this looks like. So for example, like when you go to your Amazon page and you scroll down to that, this section that's circled here, those are your, your categories. And so the ads are going to just get shown to people based on these categories. And these categories are really broad, like miracles, self-help. It's like what I've learned yeah. from, from running these ads for so long is that your chances of selling books to people are greatly increased when you can really, really like drill down on people's interests. Like my book is an inspirational self-help book about gratitude. So like self-help is a huge category. Like I sell more books when I just focus my keywords on people who are looking for self-help books just about gratitude, as opposed to like self-help books about parenting or mm -hmm. self-help books about diet. Do you know what I mean? It's a totally different yes. genre. And so what I found is that these automatic campaigns are not as effective because they're so broad, you know? Yes. And you know, you still know your audience best, whether your book has been out for a month or five years, you can still use this because you understand your audience. And I think I know that when, uh, certainly when I first learned how to create my keyword list through your course and through the first group of authors who took your course, mm -hmm. one of the things that we um, really valued was learning that fine art of creating the keyword, like mm -hmm. you just said, because um, I remember there was one author I was working with who um, had a, um, a, a fantasy book. And so she wanted to, she was like, my book is very similar to, you know, something like a JK Rowling or a, a, a Harry Potter. And so if you put Harry Potter as your keyword, um, that may not, that's so in, incredibly broad. Yeah. So many people are searching for that. So if, is there a way that you can finesse that keyword to make it more exact and precise and going through that as an author is not wasted time. It's actually mm -hmm. really great to understand your audience and where they're coming from too, to just be more precise and less broad. Totally. And I think that's the biggest here. Let me go into my little keyword slide here. So I think that's the biggest mistake I see authors making. And I, I get a lot of authors who come to my course who have already been running Amazon ad campaigns, but they're not getting really good results. They're not getting a lot of, you know, impressions on their ads. They're not getting a lot of clicks. They're not getting a lot of sales. And I've had multiple authors tell me that 
just after the first lesson and re actually using a, a keyword list like the one that I teach that it increased their their um, like their impressions their clicks their sales like exponentially and what I found is that not a lot of people are doing this because it does take some work to put this together you know um, yep. and so here's an example like these are some of the keywords from my list and I have a ton of keywords because I've been doing this for many years now, but in my course, I, I encourage people to start with a keyword list of like 300 words to really start to get mm -hmm. into the algorithm. And I know mm -hmm. people are like, oh, 300 words, but it's totally doable. You took the course, like, you know, it's doable. It's not like... It totally is. Everybody, every, just start in our presentation last week, it was like this gasp across yeah, the know. audience. It's like, no, I know. but actually, I mean, look at this list, right? It's like, yes. it's not all that different. I mean, I came up, once I kind of learned your strategy of how to create my keyword list, I was able to come up with it really quickly. And right. I, even I have added, I think I've got somewhere around 500 keywords, Josie, not to brag. Well, Roseanne. I know. I'm just saying. Here's what I've noticed from doing this keyword list thing for, for so long is that I'm always like experimenting with ad campaigns, like starting new ones, seeing, like tweaking them, see what, seeing what works and blah, blah, blah. And I always run manual campaigns and automatic campaigns together just so I can see, you know, how they perform. And it's amazing to me that my manual campaigns always outperform my automatic campaigns because I think what's happening is a lot of people are getting into the Amazon ad game right now. I mean, there's, it's, yeah. it's kind of saturated. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of authors on there, but a lot of authors don't really know what they're doing, to be honest, with love, yeah. you know, yeah. with, with the love. ads. So they just do the, they're like, I'm just going to throw a bunch of money at this. I'm going to let the algorithm do it. I'm going to sell so many books. But my data shows that those automatic campaigns don't really work. They don't even push your ad out there. I mean, they're not even like right. getting any, they're not even getting seen by people. But the reason why that is, is because so many people are searching for things. And so yeah. if you have your ad campaign tied to a keyword to the search, your ad's going to pop up. Like you are in control of when it's going to pop up. Like my thing is like, you don't ever want to let the algorithm be in control. You want to try to keep like as much control as, you know, Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Possible. And that's, that is exactly why when people, um, I'll, pretty much every time we give this presentation, Josie, we are approached by somebody or a few somebodies who say, listen, I don't have time. So no. what's your price? And we'll do this. Oh, for you. you know, what's know. your price? And then I want you to do it for me. I know. And we are so passionate that once you learn this to how to do it yourself, it is so much more valuable. I mean, we could make a lot of money doing yeah. that, uh, you know, taking people's money, but really like that, that would not help with the creative process at all. And that would really, um, I, I just feel so strongly that once authors understand how empowering it is to know how people are finding your book, totally. then you're free to create more. I appreciate the offers. I, and I, you yeah. know, I, people think I'm crazy for turning down all this money from people. But the reality is, is that I just don't think it's an author's best interest to not learn how to do. But the reality is, is like, there is this gold mine of data that comes mm -hmm. from running these keywords. So yeah. what you start to see is you can see the things that your readers are actually searching for. Like, so for example, for myself, when I first started, um, you know, running ads, I originally thought that people were going to buy my book, like from, you know, the secret crowd, like the secret or like law of attraction, like, you know, manifest any, I kind of thought that was going to be my crowd, but yeah, those keywords, nobody was buying my book from that crowd. People right. who were buying from me were like people who were searching for like self-compassion, for kindness, for forgiveness, for like, um, self-worth, you know? And I was like, oh, yep. wow, that's really cool. And I didn't necessarily even see that. And now I've changed my whole, you know, like branding basically, because that's really yeah. what people are looking for. And it actually is probably more authentic to me in the first place anyways, because I am a therapist right. and like, I, I kind of like that yep. whole heart centered approach, but 
I would have never known any of that had I not been running ads on myself and be able to see, have all these different keywords that were showing me what people wanted. I think one of, you know, it, it's a learning process, understanding these keywords for, for many reasons, but one of them is really around timing, right? Because mm -hmm. it shows you when people are interested in your book. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes the why is as uh, important as the when. Mm -hmm. So Josie has talked about, you know, her book is about gratitude, right? So like November, you know, things are going crazy oh, yeah. for her. Yep, yep. Well, I write books for teachers and educators. So um, November, not so much. Um, people aren't buying my books in November. Summer is when I am really focused on my Amazon ad campaign because I see that's when teachers have their time to start planning for the next year. And that's when I know to kind of go full force into the ads. And, you know, even just in the last week of all of this homebound coronavirus stuff, um, I had just kind of a running ad campaign that I learned how to create with Josie. Um, and it was a, a campaign that was focused toward homeschooling parents. Um, and I had, it was performing fine. I just sort of let it run and it was not, I didn't have a big budget for it. It was just sort of more creating data for me to understand how people were buying my book and what was resonating with people. Well, I looked at my ad campaign on Monday morning after all of these schools had announced their closures mm -hmm. and it was like broop, you know just mm -hmm. like all, it, sales were through the roof um my keywords were getting tons of keywords that i had not put much money behind at all were getting a ton of impressions so what i'm saying is you know not that we should all be writing books about pandemics right now but what it, right. it goes to does. show it, right right they probably will but you better run ads right it, now and have that be your keyword <laughs> That's right. But I think what, what happens is um, it shows you like just as important as understanding how to do this is understanding mm -hmm. when, and you become, it's not that you become this like masterful marketer or anything. You just become in tune with when your book is resonating with your audience. And so for me, I didn't log in on Monday, just on a fluke. You know, I had been doing this long enough to know you know what, I've been running a homeschooling campaign on Amazon and I'll bet people are searching for homeschooling materials right now. And sure enough, they were. And so mm -hmm. I was able to go in and be like, oh, well, shoot, this, this keyword, homeschooling materials for middle school is mm -hmm. going bonkers. So I'm going to put more money behind that. Yep. So, yep. you know, having that education is so, so valuable. It's super valuable. And yeah. the thing is too, is that you can now take that data and you can build a campaign outside of Amazon. That's what I like about this too. So you could do a post on Facebook about homeschooling activities for kids and have, yep. you know, recommend your book as a resource or yep. write a blog post or whatever. I mean, LinkedIn, there's, you could take that and push that everywhere. This is yeah. the takeaway of this is that if, if you, if you just do the automatic campaigns, if you don't have a keyword list, if you hire somebody to do all this for you, you would never get that data yourself. You would not know, exactly. you wouldn't know what to do. You just, you'd be slinging mud against the wall and hoping something sticks, yep. which is what most authors do with their marketing. And so this is really the foundation to help you become a much more effective marketer. Like data is really powerful. Number three. Three. Cause here's the deal. Make your book sparkle. Yeah. So let's just, so this is my book right here, right? So here's the deal. When you start running these ad campaigns, you're going to start getting a ton of people coming to this page, to your book page, just to see it, check it out, see if they want to buy it. And it has to be as on point as possible with this page. And the, what I mean by that is like your cover has to be beautiful. Yeah. You have to have a really good description of your book. You have to, having different formats of your book is really important. Um, the way mm -hmm. the analogy that I use is like, it's like getting a house ready for sale. So yeah. you want to make sure that your house is like in as good a shape as possible. It's clean. Everything's freshly painted. The outside is painted beautifully. Your landscaping is beautiful. And the other thing is like, 
not people have different houses they like to live in. Like some people like to live in condos. Some people like to live in a house. Some people like to live in a loft, you know, like some people yeah. like to read Kindle. Some people like print. Some people like audio. Yeah. So you want to have different formats of your book. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that one of the first things that you learn in the um, algorithm alchemy course that we have at Evergreen Authors is that um, these multiple formats are yes important, but all of your ads that doesn't mean that you need to run or learn four different ways of running an ad campaign. You're right. running everything yeah. through your Kindle book. Mm -hmm. So really, what you're doing is just making it so when somebody uses Amazon as the search engine that it is, and they find your book, they're going to see that there are several different options mm -hmm. to get it mm -hmm. and they can choose the option that works for them. So I will yep. say one thing that I, I tell authors a lot is um, as much as yes, it is true, the more formats you can have, the better. Um, if it's out of your budget right now to create an audiobook or to have a, a hardcover and paperback, don't worry about it for now. Mm -hmm. You can still run the ads and you can still get valuable data with just the Kindle version. But I think right. the bottom line, and you said it very kindly at the beginning, is really having a beautiful book cover because at the end yes. of the day, you know, we buy, we judge books based on their cover. It's what we do. And so the sooner we accept that as reality, the better, we, the faster we can move forward with it. So, and I've seen that with many times with several of the authors that I've worked with that weren't getting any traction with their ads. They got a cover refresh and it was like, I would say it's like unkinking a hose. It's just, you know, yeah. the sales start to come. Yeah. So I have also had authors who have had, I've had to have some tough conversations with where I'm like, you, you got to change your cover, you know, and they, they yeah. don't. Yeah. And it's right. You know, yes, yes. Nothing Being changes. If nothing is changes. Yes. It is. I mean, totally. But, but I will say the other thing that sparkles about this, and we're going to talk about this as one of your other points, but like, you know, you can notice Josie's beautiful picture on the bottom left corner. Oh, yeah. You can see that there's, you know, it's, um, there is a really professional um, synopsis of the book there. It's just, this is a very professional book page. So your book needs to sparkle in a similar way. It does. It's like I said, it's the equivalent of like, putting a house on the market. You want everything to mm -hmm. be perfect. It's, mm -hmm. it needs to be. And so, like I say in my course, the Amazon ads don't lie. And this is the heart, the thing that authors have a really tough time with when they take my course, um, mm -hmm. is that if you follow my ad strategy, you're going to get a lot of people coming to your book, but if you're not getting a yeah. lot of sales, there's a reason why. And yep. I have a whole lesson devoted to this of, yeah, here's what you need to fix. Just like when you yep. have an open house for a house you're trying to sell and people come through and they're like, oh, this house needs a paint job or oh, this carpet's so ugly. If you want to sell your house, then you will take what people say and change <laughs> right. it. You'll get the paint job and get right. the new carpet, right? But if you don't do those things, you're right. gonna have a heck of a time selling your house. And it's the same with your book. Like if you aren't willing to maybe invest in a new cover or redo your book description, that's another thing I found to be really important, or maybe like adjust your price to make sure it's in line with other books in your genre. Um, yeah. Like I have it where I can tell you exactly like what it is you need to change. Like that's the nice thing about the ads. Like it will tell you specifically, it's not like a, oh, I don't know what I need to change. It will tell you what you need to change, yeah. but you just have to be willing to, to tweak it. And sometimes it's with the ads. Sometimes you just need to up your budget or you need to put more money behind certain keywords. That's like best case scenario. But I'd say for yeah. um, some authors, it really does come down to a new, you know, a new cover or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. the deal. That's the reality, you know? And I think to be the authors who have the most success with this are the ones who are willing to, to take that data and work with it, you know? Exactly. Yep. So in line with that is number four, which is to make your author page sparkle. I feel like this is the most neglected it is. part of authordom. <laughs> it is. The, it Amazon, is. the Amazon author page. Yes. 
So I, I, I know Josie's going to talk about this, but I mean, I just want to talk about the picture in the upper left corner. So this is a lovely picture of our Thank lovely you. Josie. Um, your author picture needs to be professional. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you don't have to have your hair blowing in the wind like Josie, but you right, do right. need to have a professional picture. And I cannot tell you how many authors we have spoken with over the years who have, you know, <laughs> some sort of like screenshot that they took like Blurry. a selfie with their yeah. phone. They kind of look like a serial killer in their, their author picture. Don't be that person. It is no. such an easy fix. And as much as, you know, Amazon is not social media. You're not on there trying to like sell uh, some sort of, you know, personal connection with you necessarily. They want to trust that they're purchasing a book from a legit author. So show totally. yourself as that legit author in that, not just in the picture, but the about section. I've had plenty of authors put a picture up there and then there's nothing in the about section about them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you've just written me a self-help book, why should I listen to what you have to say? And you know, if you're a fiction author, I guess that's less important. Um, maybe you write under a pen name, still use, create an about you section that is compelling. Other things you've written, other things you're hoping to write, where you blog. I mean, this is, this is kind of like a bonus website for you. So totally. use it to its potential. Totally. I mean, that's the thing. People, they'll read one of your books, especially if you have multiple books, they're going to read your book mm -hmm. and then they're going to come visit this page to figure out if they want to read more of your books. And if this page mm -hmm. is like a hodgepodge of, you know, yes. Yes. hot mess, people are less <laughs> likely to buy your other books. So you really right. want to make sure you've got like a solid bio. That is something that, you know, I feel like a lot of authors too write these weird bios sometimes, you know? Oh. Right. Like they'll say something like, like they're focused on, you know, the, their cats that they live with, right, and, which right. is cute. And I love cats. You like know if, I love cats, but. I know you do. Who doesn't? That, but that's not the point. Like, it, and, and I think that a lot of times authors do make this harder than it needs to be. The way that I did mine was just by going to other authors that I yep. love and admire to see what they wrote. Totally. And obviously I'm not going to copy what they wrote, but like, oh, I see they did talk about um, where they went to school or they did mention where they live with their family. And you don't have to include anything you don't want to include, but just, you know, look at other examples of authors who you admire, who are doing it right and just use those and emulate them. It's not hard. No. And also like, this is another opportunity to be able to use some keywords mm -hmm. to get people, you know, the right readers. So I, I use the word yeah. gratitude multiple times in my <laughs> bio because my books, obviously, as you can see, are about gratitude. And also the space here, this author update space, I'm really visual. So I have put mostly pictures and like a video, but mm -hmm you can attach your blog to this. And the thing is too, mm -hmm. if you have a blog, make sure the blog is relevant to what it is that you write about. Um, yeah, that's a whole nother yeah. presentation we could do. But the thing is, is, is you want to make sure this author update section is really professional too. A lot of people visit this page. Um, yeah. and so it needs to sparkle as much as your book page does. Okay. So we should talk about this. That the book sales cycle is really real. It um, is real. We touched on this a little bit earlier, but it's, mm -hmm. it's worth going back to. It is. And so since I've been running ads for so long and getting so much data, and I'm just a data nerd, I analyze the heck out of everything. And I've noticed that every year there's sort of this predictable sales cycle, especially with my book. And um, since mine is really like, Focus on gratitude, and it's a gift book too. Um, around the holidays, especially, it's you know the majority of my book sales come through that time. And I've noticed that there's a lot more people shopping on Amazon, fall holidays, even January to February, and then there's like yeah. this drop in the spring, yeah. and then summer. There's usually a pickup again of people who you know they want books to read while they're on the beach or on vacation or you know, in their time off. But 
Yep. In general, I, I, I have gotten a lot of like frantic author emails in around April of like, oh, they've changed the yep. algorithm again. And it's like, yep. no, 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 no. It's just this time of year is, is usually a slump. But this year, I don't right. know. I, I wonder what's going to happen this year. With, right. I mean, with as it. we are sitting in our homes yeah. Um, kind of quarantined for, you know, we don't know how long during this people are turning to books. Totally. So I feel like this is all the more reason for authors to understand how to do this work themselves yes. and take control of it. Because imagine if you were paying somebody 500 bucks a month to run these ads for you, that means they get the data. They yeah. don't care about the data. You, you're just giving them money every month and just hoping to break even. Whereas if you have the information and the education, you're able to, you know, kind of like I was explaining earlier, like understand like on Monday morning, as I'm frantically putting together homeschooling activities for my children, right. thinking to myself, I'll bet people are searching and finding my book. And sure enough, they were. So I think, totally. I think it's, it, it's valuable. And I think um, one of the biggest things for me that's um, been a real joy in the last few years of teaching book marketing is that um, we do not live in the age of you have to launch a book in the fall or the spring anymore. Right. Um, I've talked to lots of authors who are like, oh, I can't launch in the summer. Nobody launches in the summer. I, I mean, that's not true anymore. You can launch your book whenever you want. Just be, be conscious. And um, that whole, you know, the year after your book comes out, there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a huge yep. journey around it. We've already talked about the burnout piece, but like, you, you know, you're going to need a solid year of data to really understand what your book cycle is just on any totally. given year. Totally. So give yourself the gift of understanding how to interpret that data when it comes. So anyways, but, but this is something I think for all authors to keep in mind too, is that there is this ebb and flow of yes. book sales. And I think the reason why so many like traditional publishers always release their books around the fall is because that is the busiest time of year sure. for book sales. And so there's this automatic boost yep. for them. Anyways, but yep. the thing I like about now times is that things are evergreen. I mean, you can, yep. things are always available. Yep. You can, and things that were, it's not so much like having to release like constantly all the time. It's just having exactly. like a really great book that can always be discovered. So yep. people who, somebody who wrote a pandemic book five years ago is probably <laughs> doing right. really good. Like Contagion is like number one in the iTunes right. store right now. And that movie's from, I don't right. know, like the 90s or something. I know, that's exactly the mm. point of this. That's a whole, the whole point of, of learning it. And if we're going to be confined in our homes anyway, right. Right. now is the time to learn it and take advantage of it and, um, you know, empower totally. yourself. Totally. All right, let's move on to number six. Okay, this is something that I am really excited about. I know well, and are. we've and we've seen this now, like how connected we are globally. Right, right. I mean, it's kind of amazing how. I feel like we've known that, but I feel like this has really brought to light how connected we are. Yeah, around the world, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, and so, um, the thing that I'm really excited about with with Amazon right now is that you can now run your ads in the global marketplaces of Amazon. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just been, you've just been able to run them in Amazon US basically, but now they opened it up in the UK and Spain and Germany. France, Italy, Germany. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so you can run your campaigns in all of these different places. And the thing that I get really excited about is that um, it feels right now like running ads in, in some of these other countries is sort of like getting in on Amazon ads like a yeah. few years ago when not many people were running ads and you could just like kill it because not many yep. people were running ads. But um, it's, it's, it's kind of feels like that with being able to run ads globally because I don't know that everybody's doing right. it right now. And so right. just for example, I've got some data that I think is really interesting. So these are some campaigns I just started running in the UK. For my book and first off this again highlights the difference between automatic campaigns and manual campaigns 
Complete, I, mean, I mean, look at those impressions. There's like no right. comparison. So for people who don't know what impressions are, that's like how many times your ad is like popped up on the screen in front of somebody. So for the automatic ad where the algorithm just chooses where your ad goes, I've got 25,000 impressions. But for my manual campaign where I have my keyword list, it's almost a million impressions. They've been running mm -hmm. the exact same amount of time. And the sales mm -hmm. too. I mean, you can see like 142 orders versus five, five, you know, a thousand dollars versus and I think, 60 bucks. Yep. I do want to add that this was the point. Um, I remember last week that some people got a little panicky because they were like, oh gosh, is this what it looks like on the back end? Like, is this what running a campaign kind of looks like? The, we teach this in the course, yeah. how to read this and understand it. So it is very manageable. Again, if I can do it, anybody can do it. But I want people to understand that like, for me, looking at this now is just second nature. Like right. I understand what it means and what we teach you is how to do that. Totally. And I've, I've seen that happen so many times with people who are like, oh. but then once, as soon as they learn yeah. how to do this, it's so easy to interpret right. this. So, um, so for example, like I said, I just started running this in the UK and already it's getting this huge amount of traction. This is just one campaign. I mean, there are people who right. run like Mark many. Dawson, who's this like superstar yes. author in the indie community, he like a you know, mm -hmm. millionaire author or whatever. He, I heard him in a podcast say he runs a thousand Amazon ad campaigns. So he's got like a thousand. Yeah. I don't have that many. I'm just going to say like, I can only manage like a few. Yeah. I'm cool with it. Like I'm just, yes. I, yes. you know, I'm like, I'm he's, like a local business author. I don't want to be like a CEO <laughs> of a large company. Totally. Yes. He had, he is all in with oh, these yeah. campaigns and he does the same on Facebook too. Our approach is very much little, like, yeah, it's more grassroots. Was, like, you know, yeah. Like, like, like wait you in, it, you know, well, see what the data tells you and then carefully yeah. wait a little bit deeper if you want to, yeah. but we wouldn't be comfortable. I mean, our whole, our whole philosophy at Evergreen Authors is, is for authors to take minimal financial risk yes. when it comes to selling their books. Like yes. that's the whole reason why we don't push people to hire a really expensive publicist totally. or um, totally. take out a half a million dollars in ad campaigns. Like no. you don't need to do that. Like you have chosen to spend $5 a day. That is a, a latte. So, totally. you know, that to me totally. is a manageable. And if you get to a point where you see something that's performing well, then maybe you change that to $10 or maybe you start at two or $3. Like totally, it's, it is absolutely more manageable this way. And that we're just more comfortable teaching people this way. So, but I think that global markets are oh, the next big frontier. You know, I feel yeah. like, you know, we've just kind of just been focused on especially as Americans, you know, we just tend to focus on America and American sales and things like that. But there's like this yeah. huge global market out there of people who yep. love reading, you know, and now we yep. have this technology to connect with them. And yep. I'm really excited about it. I think that we're kind of just getting started with all this. I totally agree. Pe yeah, people are reading, time to learn people this. are reading more now than ever, you know, they are. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to be an author for that reason. Totally. Totally. Okay. So let's see. Now I know some of you are like, how do I do this? Okay. And we've talked about the course like multiple times. So here's the course that we've been talking about today. It's called Algorithm Alchemy. Alchemy. I like my alliteration. And it's about how to create these Amazon ad campaigns that we've been talking about. These really strategic campaigns where you use the keyword list, where you set a really a budget that works best for you, you know what I mean? That you can make the, the most amount of profits that you can, and you can just learn how to do this right away. So here's the deal. Like you, you can absolutely, if you feel inspired right now to go run ad campaigns, please do like go ahead. Like there's free tutorials out there. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can do to learn how to do this. We mm -hmm. created this course to help you shortcut the process to get your ads up and running right away ad campaigns that will perform well for you right away and also mm -hmm. to be able to tell you what you might need to tweak in order to get them running as optimized as possible it is all 100 percent online it's lifetime access instant access you can 
purchase it and just like get access to it immediately. Start the lessons right away. Start learning how to start creating your keyword lists and creating campaigns. You could get them launched like as quick as possible to take advantage of this unique time we're living in right now where people are going to be reading more books and be on Amazon more, buying a whole bunch of stuff because yes. stores have maybe closed in their area. Yeah. Um, I just, I say this as somebody who is really pro Amazon, that I think it's really important to think beyond Amazon too, because as history has proven to us time and again, like things are never too big to, to fall. Um, mm -hmm. Things are always getting disrupted. There could always be another, who knows? Yeah. Amazon. Or that's that's the the name of the game. There's going to be uh, there there will be there's another there's going to be another Facebook. Right. We are we're of the MySpace generation. Remember right. when? Right. Yes. I do. Like so, I think the point is really um, understanding that you know yes, Amazon is the biggest bookseller in the world right now, and yes, you you really should be taking advantage of that, but. Also keep your eye on other things popping up. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the really great thing about taking the algorithm course is that it teaches you sort of the basics around some of this digital advertising in yes. the first place. I have used the skills that I learned in the Amazon course in, um, on Pinterest because yes. they have a similar backend ad um, situation there. And so, you know, it, it, taking the course is going to give you the the kind of the tools you need when you start thinking beyond Amazon in general. It's true. And that's, I mean, this is what I say in my courses. If you can get it right mm -hmm. on Amazon, you get it right everywhere else. So if you mm -hmm. take that data that you get from running Amazon ad campaigns, you can start to, to use that on platforms outside of Amazon. So I, I use Pinterest too. Like I love Pinterest and you can, if you know how to do Amazon ad campaigns, you can easily run Pinterest ad campaigns or know what to, to pin about, know what to blog about, know how to run Facebook ads. And you'll know yep. where you should focus those ads because you have yep. that data. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the, the gold in these Amazon ad campaigns. Like I said, so even yes. if Amazon's not around in however many years or whatever, you will be such a smarter marketer because you've been able to mine that data yep. than somebody who has no clue, like how to, you know, what, to, you know, where to market their book or how to market their book or, you know, all that kind of stuff, where to focus exactly. their efforts. Exactly. You can use this for the life, lifetime of your career, this, the whole span of your writing career, for sure. Totally. And like I said, we, we say this, we've said this in every presentation we've done. We, we do different presentations besides Amazon. We talk about all kinds of different book marketing things, but the, the number one thing that we talk about in our presentations is to sell to people who want to buy your book. That is your yep. number one job as an author is to find those people. You just want to be like a matchmaker, like match your book yes. to the right person, the person who wants yeah. your book. That's, that's all you're doing. And so the easiest way, in my opinion, to do that is through running these Amazon ad campaigns. I just think it's definitely the easiest way to do it. You just have robots do it for you, you know? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. All right. So, all right. um, Thank you for joining yeah. us. I know yes. that this was a long presentation. I'm guessing you uh, probably had the time to listen to it now yeah. while we're all yes. on lockdown. <laughs> um, I hope that you got as much out of this presentation as you were hoping for. If you have questions for us, you can find us on evergreenauthors.com. Mm -hmm. We all have a bunch of free downloads on evergreenauthors.com. Yep. We are on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. If you wanna send us a message, um, feel free to do that. Um, or if you're just ready to jump into learning some of these Amazon ad strategies, then um, you can feel free to do that as well. So thanks for joining.